Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Zoning Commission meeting of August 11th, 2010. Roll call of members. Please note that Commissioners Dumas, Slyman, and Nance are not present. Public comment period. Anyone in the audience wishing to comment on any item not on the agenda? Please come forward and you'll have three minutes. No one wishing to comment? Public hearing, public comment period is closed. Acceptance of the minutes from July 14th Zoning Commission meeting. Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Barrow, seconded by Commissioner Kluat for approval. Any opposition? Motion carries. Item number five, public hearing to amend the Ascension Parish Development Code for recommendation. Item number A, zoning review ID 2095.10, lot one, Magnolia Lane subdivision for Lewis Lambert. Good evening. My name is David Smith. I'm here for Lewis Lambert. He's out of state on business. I ask to come forward. Uh, Mr. Lambert is seeking rezoning of a residential lot to a commercial lot. This lot is located off of Perkins Road, about a quarter mile from the Prairieville Walmart. The uh, subdivision is named Magnolia Lane Subdivision. It is a one road subdivision. And when it was built back in the 80s, 1980 actually, the first four lots on each side of the road were designated as commercial. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lambert bought a lot in 2003 while it was zoned commercial and his intent was to buy a commercial lot and put a law office on that lot. Since uh, 2003, the zoning has changed back to residential. Now, in support of his request on the west side of Magnolia Lane subdivision road, there is a convenience store and behind it is a car wash and storage facility. On the east side where Mr. Lambert wants to build a law office, there is his empty lot, which is 0.95 acres, with a 300-foot frontage on Perkins Road. He wishes to build a law office, non-intrusive type business, uh, open to regular business hours, not on weekends, produces no noise, no, no toxic emissions. And he puts this before the commission and requests that you approve it. Okay. Thank you. Comments, questions by commission? I have a question, question for Ooh. staff <laughs> for this. Um, Back up, Mr. Smith, if you don't mind. On page two, I'm talking about this is for uh, 2095.10. Um, the recommendation here refers to ID number 2096.10. I, can I assume that's a typo? Yes, sir. You can assume okay. that. Okay. Yes, Just wanted to be sure. And there's another typo on page one where it says existing zoning is, and it's uh, mixed use, not MU2. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. RM. I'm sorry. RM. It's RM, so the, not the existing is RM? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. May I add something? Yes, sir. Yes. But behind Mr. Lambert's lot is a vacant lot, and then there's another business, which is Baton Rouge Ironworks. So we do have businesses in the subdivision. Smith, you, you spoke on you spoke about Mr. Lambert's law office, but I also see and rental units. What else is he? Could you could you give well, us a little more explanation on that? Like many of the law firms here in town, in order to help pay your rent and your expenses, you build a law office and you you build a couple of rental units and help pay for your 
construction costs. So it's, it's common around town as well, you know. So these would be professional? These would be professionally or rent to professional like CPAs or right. engineers. Okay. <clears throat> Any other comments at this time? All right. Hearing no other comments, uh, we've got a couple people in the audience that do want to comment. And uh, if anybody else would like to comment, please come fill out the card and, and bring it up to me, and I'll recognize you. You have three minutes. Al Robert. Good, Al Robert. Good Alan Robert. Alan. That's a cousin. <laughs> we're all related. If it's Robert and it's uh, Gonzalez area, we're all related. Yep. Uh, my name is Alan Robert. I'm here representing myself. Uh, I live in Greenbrier Estates, which is the subdivision that is backs up to Magnolia Estates. My house is the second house off of Old Perkins in Greenbrier Estates. So my property would touch uh, Mr. Lambert's proposed development. Uh, on, on a corner at a point, I guess is what you would say. Uh, behind my house, I would imagine, is the next two things that are on the agenda, which is lots two and three. I, I won't address those immediately. Uh, but basically, I came here to tell you that myself and my family don't oppose Mr. Lambert's development uh, as regards uh, the property that fronts on Old Perkins. Uh, I've lived where I live presently for over 20 years, and I've been there pre-Walmart and post-Walmart. And I can tell you I didn't oppose Walmart as when many of my neighbors did, and maybe I should have now that I know how much money my wife spends over there. <laughs> but, but seriously, because of the work you all have done in the parish council, the traffic actually has improved in our area since Walmart moved it, uh, was built. They put better turn lanes, the traffic moves faster, it's easier to get out. The drainage, quite frankly, is better. And I know it's because of the work that y'all have done. And I don't have a problem with a nice commercial development on that location. We've seen old Perkins change in 20 years. Uh, right now there's a dentist office that's coming up in a location where a house was before, right on the side of Walmart on old Perkins. And every lot that's not already residential is becoming commercial. And I personally do not have a problem with that. Uh, now, I don't know what's going to proposed for the lots two and three. I really don't even know. Didn't know anything about that till I got here today, and not knowing what's on there, I probably would uh, will stick around to yeah. object to that unless <laughs> I, I know what's on those. Right. Just comment on the one that's before us today. Yes. Thank right you. now, this time. I've asked her any questions, but I thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you, <clears throat> David Smith. Well, that was you. I thought you're presenting it, so I don't think you have, have anybody else to comment on this one. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Rushing. I live at 18461 Magnolia Estates and have lived there for over 20 years. Uh, the first thing I want to make clear when this subdivision was built in the 80s, there was no zoning in this parish. In 1999, when zoning came into effect, this lot was zoned residential and has been residential ever since. Am I correct, Lance? Okay. There's quite a few commercial establishments between the railroad tracks and airline highway on Perkins Road, but not a single one of those lots is zoned commercial. Am I correct? So everyone is a non-conforming use. So by changing this first lot to commercial, you can start a precedence that's going to just expand down the whole street. Uh, Mr. Lambert did purchase this lot in 2003, and if I remember correctly, I wish he was here to speak for himself on this, it was based on a condition of a variance that would allow him to build a larger building than the zoning allowed. So for the past seven years, the lot has sat there, nothing's been done. Grass has been cut on occasion, but nothing else has been done. Matter of fact, beginning late last year and continuing into this year, the lot was for sale. I guess he didn't get a good enough offer, so now he's come back to try to build his law office again. I did uh, 
Me and some of the neighbors walked the street last night with a petition. Uh, we have 57 lots on our street. You can take out a few undeveloped lots that are vacant, plus the ones that are up for uh, before you this evening. And out of the left, left over 49 lots, we have 36 signatures of people that live in the neighborhood that would be directly affected or opposed to this. And our main concern is not with what is being said is going to be built there, but once the zoning gets changed, the lot may go for sale the next day, and we have no control over what's going to affect the residents in our neighborhood. So that's all I have to say. Other speak people here need to speak and voice their concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. My name is John Graham, and I also live on Magnolia Estates at 18456 Magnolia Estates. My biggest concern with this is the traffic on Magnolia Estates trying to get on Old Perkins Road in the morning time and the evening times is horrendous. Not considering all the other stuff that Jeff has said, um, <coughs> Mr. Lambert's representative made a comment about the storage building next door. As the subdivision, we proposed not to build it, but the the, uh, the guy that owns the car wash got a permit through the permit office. Uh, it was supposed to be private use only. Nobody's supposed to be renting in it. But then we there's a sign in the front. They're renting now. Uh, Laverne has had to shut the project down. They found them working in the building after it was uh, the CO was got for the building, and that's that's something other that we didn't have no control over because of the way the owner went about getting the permit for that. So, like Jeff said, the biggest thing we're concerned about is the rezoning. If it gets rezoned, could they build something different? Some that you know we won't have no control over and the traffic getting on magnolia states in the morning time coming over the railroad track the traffic backs up you can't get out it's sometimes it'd be five to ten minutes it's dangerous and there's the traffic the parking lot would have to exit onto magnolia states and then they right there that close to the stop sign it's just going to back it up thank you All right. <clears throat> thank you Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. Hello, I'm uh, Keith Mink. I live at uh, 18528 1852, Magnolia Estates. Uh, I have several properties on that street. Um, I've been on the street for 17 years. Uh, those lots, um, well, Mr. Mr. Lambert's lots have been vacant since I've been on the street. Um, the additional, the things that the guys have said before us have all been uh, concerns in the past. Uh, servitude, um, sewer, uh, drainage, That there, there is no city sewer there. Um, so there will be a sewer discharge somewhere. Uh, we have a drainage problem on that street, on that end, up through lots one, two, three, four, probably up through lots eight since they've raised the road back in the years. Um, the parish is working on a plan right now to try to get this drainage to drain out on both sides of the road. Uh, any infrastructure that's not done in that subdivision to get the water out of this place before anything's approved and built um, it's going to be a water, very bad water problem on that street. Um, lot 56, I think, or where the car wash is. Uh, when that building went in, there were concerns by the parish, well, by by the store owner in the front, about how high that building had to be post Katrina. It was raised up another foot. Um, he don't dump any water on anybody, but the water has a cross the, underneath the road. There's a, um, a crossing for that water to get back to the railroad tracks and drain. It's not doing that now, so Mr. Lambert's property is going to wind up. It's had water on it before, and I'm looking at the, what the infrastructure is not going to have, what's not being done now and had been done by the parish to let 
to put something else on his lot. And as Spike said, that uh, the storage building that was put behind the car wash, um, it was done with a waiver, with a, with a signed documentation through the parish that they would not put um, a building there. That building would not be used other than for private use. And it is being used for other things now, and it's a concern of ours. So as a, as a landowner, a property owner on that street, um, I'm just in opposed to that with the, drain, with the drainage and the traffic study it's going to take to get any more traffic coming off onto that street instead of going on to Old Perkins. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment? My name is Ray O'Quinn. I live at uh, 18680. I've been in there for in the subdivision for 12 years, and uh, and I'm opposed to any variance. Um, as Jeff said, you know it's residential now, and uh, in fact the commercial properties that are operating uh, grant, that were grandfathered in, I think it's already in the books that if if they uh, go if they're not operating commercially for six months, it reverts. You know they lose that, that variance and it, it goes back to residential. So I think the intent is clear, is that it's a residential subdivision and it, it's intended to stay that way. And I'm against the okay. change. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? No one else wishing to comment. Okay. Terry Boyer, I um, own the lots behind Mr. Lambert, <clears throat> the next two lots, and I do under, understand the concerns of the subdivision, and I, I do not see why we couldn't all work together on a lot of those concerns. Some of them aren't even your concern, like the sewer. The, the, we are all in all front eight lots, as he said earlier, were designed commercial before anyone purchased any property. Where we have a unique situation here is it got picked up, it was before zoning came into effect, so it got picked up as residential. And at the time, there were a few people already there doing some commercial. So now we're in an oddity or odd situation because we've got com commercial surrounding us. So I just want to say that I am for him, Mr. Lambert, being zoned commercial. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment? Yes, ma'am. My name is Tanya Ellis. I live on Magnolia Estates also. I own five lots on it. One being lot number 54, which is one of the eight lots up front that uh, was commercial when it was planned way back when. Um, I knew that um, there was no zoning or how quite it worked, and I don't have my paperwork, and I don't know the exact year. I believe it was 2003. I went to the commission to uh, make sure that I could do anything I wanted or what. I asked, what can I do with this property? I met with Mr. Harvey Kling at that point. He looked up the property on a map. He told me, you can do anything you want with this property. And it was considered commercial. Now, I have documentation from this board saying that my lot was, is commercial, and that's in 2003. Please forgive me, I don't have that with me. But I will bring it if you will extend it or any what what you want. So the commission has already you know gone down into the planning commission. I've already had this and went through this. That's the only thing I have. Okay. And so of course I am for Mr. Lambert. I'd like to tell him welcome to the neighborhood. 
All right. My name is April Mink, and I live on the Magnolia Estates as well. My husband is Keith Mink. We have a couple lots. My concern is, Miss Ellis just spoke. She put residential on her lot. You know, she has a trailer on her lot, and she's using it as residential. If we were to let these lots go back to commercial, what's to stop anybody else on that road from deciding to change their lots to commercial? And then we have to deal with even more of the influx of people coming up and down that road. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> you've already, you've already commented. I can't read. <clears throat> no, not unless we we ask you a question. My name is Leanne Phillips, and I'm here uh, with TB Enterprises or Terry Boyer for lots two and three. Um, I wanted to point out that originally, as was stated, um, the covenants, it was recorded as residential in January 1980. But then it was amended again in April of 1980, and I do have the documentation, and it states that all lots are industrial and commercial purposes only. Also, in June of 1982, the covenants were, uh, were um, amended, and it states in these covenants that lots one through four, 54, 55, 56, and 57 were designated as commercial. So currently the zoning that's in effect conflicts with the restrictions as recorded. So we're requesting that you please consider that. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else who hasn't? Had the opportunity. No one else wishing to comment. Public hearing is closed. And I guess I'm going to ask <coughs> Mr. Brock, can you kind of go through what your records show just because we've heard a lot of translations. Right. Can you ask that one more time, please? <laughs> Historically, what do your records show as far as the zoning of this piece of property? The zoning of this property this time is is RM, and uh, whatever what uh, some people stated is correct that it, um, everything in that area is RM uh, residential. There are a lot of nonconformings that are in that area. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that the recommend or the recommendation or the the I guess the yeah the recommendation is that um, area this area sh should be looked at. Possibly uh, for MU2, uh, for a change of MU2, a recommendation. Uh, but basically, the lots that front on um, uh, Old Perkins Road, and there are existing commercial uses that are out there. And with that, uh, based on that, those uses and uh, like a block area, I believe that you have in your in your packet, uh, uh, staff makes a recommendation to. Uh, look at those areas and possibly make a recommendation to approve the MU. <clears throat> MU2. Two. Two. Okay. A question I have in relation to that is we, we just had a parish wide rezoning a couple, basically. Sure. Year a year ago. ago. Year yeah, and yeah half about ago. a year and a half how ago. Come, how come? That, that just never came up, just like some other ones that, that have come up in the past. That's come for rezoning. Uh, those things were Lance. Yes. How many times has Perkins Road's Perkins Road come up before this commission? Per I mean, that's okay, Ricky. I can I, answer that one. That's. I mean, it's, <laughs> it didn't come up. It's, it's come up a number of on, times. 
November of 2002, lot 1. June of 2006, lot 2, 4, and 56. August of 2006, lots 2, 4, 3, and 56. All of those came forward as Crossroads commercial applications. They all wanted to be Crossroads commercial. I don't have a good reason as to why it wasn't addressed during the parish-wide rezone, but when Mr. Lambert sat down in my office and we looked at that whole area and we pulled up the aerial, and the fact of the matter is there's a granite shop, there's a convenience store, there's a mini warehouse, you're bordered on one side by the railroad tracks, and on the other side of that is business park. It seems like a logical place that a little node of commercial for those lots that front on Perkins Road could occur. That was our reasoning. During the parish-wide rezone, we didn't really look to, to locate new commercial except for in a, a few locations. Clearly, this is one we probably could have looked at. Well, it, it, uh, I'm not pointing the finger at y'all. I'm just, uh, we're we talking about a lot of non-conforming uses. I thought at the time that was said that was one of the reasons, one of the things that we were looking at doing with this last parish-wide rezoning. We were trying to clean some of that up. I, not all, but we were trying to touch on that, okay? Um, as far as, far as uh, subdivision covenants, the commission has nothing to do with that. I, that we, we don't, we don't uh, that's, that's a civil matter. So I, I don't think we can really even look at that. We, we can't even take that into consideration. But I think what we need to do is uh, we just, the, the zoning subcommittee needs to sit down and look at this area and, and uh, try and get with the residents out there and bring something back to the commission for the area. Yeah, for the, for the, whole, for the whole area. Uh, rather than having to come up with, with one lot here and two lots there. Um, so I, that's all I got right now. Well, the putting a, a mixed-use office, law office and that kind of professional offices on lot one of Magnolia Estates would be a good transition from the gas station and commercial store that's over there on lot 57 to provide a buffer between the gas station and the very nice homes in Greenbrier. So uh, my position is that uh, what Mr. Lambert is asking would be a good fit for that one lot under these circumstances, limiting it to professional offices of, of that type, which Statistically, they have relatively low traffic impact uh, in the area. So I think I think it's a good fit for right there. Well, in fact, it's an MU2, which limits it. If it was just the MU, there would be more uses. Right. But this is the MU2. The uses are limited, and it is more in a professional direction. So... If he, if he was coming with just an MU, replacing MU, yeah, I'd, I'd have to look at that a little bit differently. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions at this time? What is the wish of the commission? Well, um, I'll recommend approval uh, for that one lot, the MU2, uh, specifically because I think it'll make a good transition from the gas station quick stop that's on the, across the street to ease the impact as it moves into the residential over there for the uh, Greenbrier Estates. I'll se excuse me, excuse me. I'll second it. Uh, I have a motion to approve by Commissioner Dalton, seconded by Commissioner Marshawn. Uh, Commissioner Kluwat is abstained. Yes. Any objection? Motion carries. And we'll go to the council. <laughs> Item number 5B, zoning review ID. 2096.1, Lot 2, Magnolia Lane Subdivision for TB Enterprises.
um, we're requesting um, that the um, zoning be changed for lots two and three of Magnolia Lane subdivision from RM to MU2 um, for pretty much the same reasons as were stated above uh, for the previous lot. We're proposing the use to be professional office buildings. Do you have a picture of where it's located? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. What is on the lot right now? There's nothing on the lot. Why is there a picture? Um, what of I something on it. The map is what I guess I can say. Picture of map. Um, I'm behind Mr. Lambert, mm -hmm. and in, in between the iron shop across the street from the convenience store. Right. And car wash. So just Lance, why is it? Yeah. Why is there look like there's a structure on it? Am I? Oh, it's a slab. There was a metal building at one time, a storage building that was there. It's it was there. Okay. I guess. So this was probably taken when the yes, the metal yes. building was on it. Then. Right. A metal building was on at the time that the aerial was taken, and by that by this time is has been taken okay. off. But the slab is there. Yes. Sir. Okay. And the intention is to build something very similar, um, a professional low um, traffic office building, very similar to what Mr. Lambert is doing. Okay, any <clears throat> questions, comments by commissioners? Yeah, are we considering both lots at, at the same time or just uh, just one of them at a time? Lot one, just lot two or three or lot? Just or lot, two lot two and three. Lot two, lot okay. Two, lot two. Would you all stick to just lot two, please? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <coughs> Any comments, questions by commissioners? No comments, questions? All right. Open up the floor for public hearing. Anyone wishing to comment, please come forward. Sign in and you'll have three minutes to speak. John Graham again. I live on Magnolia Estates. I'm here against this. Um, during the last lot thing, this is all these lots was brought, not lot one, but two, three, and the ones the next across the street was brought up all last year. It's been less than about a year now. It was spot zoning in. It's still spot zoning. We still have the same problem with the traffic trying to get in and out of Magnolia States. We Miss Terry bought Lot 2. It had a trailer on it. It had a building on it. It's not a metal building. It was a wood frame workshop that was about to fall down. They tore it down. It's, when she bought the lot, it was a residential lot. So I, I oppose this. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Next. Who's sign next? Uh, my name is Luisa Oquin, and I live in Manolia States as well. I just want to um, emphasize on the gas station. It's not your regular gas station. It's more like a, a neighborhood store. They close by dark. Um, there's no concern about what kind of people will attract or anything like that because they're pretty much like a neighborhood store. That's all I needed to clarify. Thank you. I just want to voice my opposition. Uh, you know, there's 40-some-odd uh, families that live on that street, and um, I can understand if you have property, you want to get it zoned to your best financial advantage. But, uh, you know, the people that are petitioning to have these zones changed, they, they're not even residents of the neighborhood. So, you know, I, I just fail to see why um, 
you know, their wishes should be upheld over the residents that, that live in the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Uh, I have lived on Magnolia Estate since 1990, and I've had nothing but problems with the servitude ditches that are not maintained. I still have that problem, and all I can see is that it can get worse. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um. I again would like to say that it's the same issue as the issue before. Um, you know, I really don't understand why, I, like Mr. Ray said, that you know the residents who actually live on that street are not being taken into consideration. But the the store closes at dark. It's not a mini storage. It's owned by one individual. It's his own personal use. It's not a rental property. The car wash has been there forever. And yes, it stays with tons of people, and they come riding up and down the road constantly. So yes, if that was to ever change, it would go back to residential. Um, we're not looking to have any more commercial lots on that. And I'm just, again, y'all all night have talked about if y'all let one door open, it's going to cause you know a parade of other things. Well, I'm saying again, if you allow this to go back to commercial, what's to stop somebody from being in the middle of that road and come back into you and ask you, I want it to be commercial. Are you going to tell them no when you've already told these other people yes? You know, I mean, it's it's opening a can of worms. Thank you. I'm Keith Mink. I live on uh, Magnolia Lane. Uh, my wife said. We open a can of worms now because there are numerous lots on this street that it doesn't matter if it's a homeowners association or whatever there is, whether a lot, whether a house in Greenbrier Estate sells for one hundred forty dollars a foot, and one on Magnolia Estate sells for one hundred fifty dollars a foot. Um, there's, you know, if we need a buffer, we can put trees. We don't need another building. Um, the lots that are there. They are not owned by people other than the Ellis's who keep their lot up. These other people that own these lots, Lambert, Terry, and whoever it is that's got next to the car wash, these people have never been on the street. The two lots, lots two and three, those were both had trailers on them when Terry bought them. They both had residents on them. They weren't commercial buildings. So, yeah, as a homeowner, in a, I'm, I'm looking, I don't need another m bunch more of um, commercial buildings up and down my street when I, you know when I go to sell my house and I turn around and I can you know get more value for it when I got commercial buildings sitting at the end of the road what's there is there if they ever if they ever close down shut down I'll be the first in line to oppose if they stay get tore down or they'll be sold and they won't be reopened as commercial buildings but I oppose lots two and three Thank you. Jeff Rushing. Hi, Jeff Rushing. I uh, live on Magnolia Estates, not Greenbrier. Uh, this is what the lot looked like when Ms. Boyer bought it. Uh, right where the shadow of the tree is, had been a trailer there forever till she bought it. That's what it looked like then. This is what it looks like today. Doesn't affect her. She doesn't live on the street. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? That's it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Coach, I'll present it to you. Can you yeah, absolutely. Just make sure there's nobody else going to comment. Anyone else wishing to comment? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Okay. We understand some of the concerns of the neighbors and agree with them. They have some drainage concerns, and I don't feel like whether it's residential or commercial, whichever type of improvement you put there, you're still going to have drainage concerns. So I think uh, hopefully we could work with the residents to go to DPW and address these drainage concerns. Right now, 
on the on lot two, it's surrounded by commercial, so it's it's not exactly as desirable to go construct residential on that lot on lot two or three on lot two as it would to be to promote a um, professional office building to have that there and I would argue that I don't think that putting a professional office similar to what Mr. Lambert's going to put would diminish the property values of the residents any more than what's already existing there. If I were someone going to look to buy on that street, I think I'd already be influenced if I had a convenience store or a car wash there no more than if a professional office building was there. So we ask that you please uh, would consider a favorable response to our request. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions, comments by commissioners? Question for staff, Mr. Compton. Staff's recommendation. Can you elaborate a little bit? I, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I, I do agree with it. Uh, I'm just, you know, kind of... Uh, share with the commission what y'all looked at how you know how y'all were looking at it and so forth when the mixed-use two zoning designation was created it was created with the intention of creating an alternative zoning category that was commercial in nature that was a transition between highway um, to commercial to residential and it's our interpretation that the lots that front on Perkins Road do not require access off of a local road to serve as a commercial use. The lots that are stepping back into that residential community, they're accessing a residential local road. They should not be rezoned to commercial regardless of what the mixed use crossroads, mixed use to. They just don't have access to a road that can support commercial use. Which with that, I'm gonna offer a motion to recommend denial to the parish council based on <laughs> And I'm going to second it because I agree with you. A motion by Commissioner Marshawn for denial. Seconded by Commissioner Dalton. Any opposition? Motion to deny is approved and will go to the council. Item number 5C. Zoning Review ID 2097.1, Lot 3, Magnolia Lane Subdivision for TB Enterprises. Basically, it's a ditto on everything that we said. Yeah. Those two connect. I, I think you all have the map. Um, one thing that just occurred to me is if, um, if we could do two and three as one lot, that would help with the traffic. They are owned by, I owned both of those lots. Um, so they could be adjoined where you would have the traffic flow. They wouldn't have to go down in the neighborhood and turn in people's driveway. So that's a suggestion that they'd be treated as one. But it's the same thing. It's located. It's completely surrounded by commercial. So that's the, that's the reason that um, I would not want to put a home on there. And even in, in backing up if there was a home even to go there as far as the drainage, I, do, I want to... Tell y'all, whether I put a house there or a residence, I'm, I'm going to be y'all's neighbor one way or another, and I do want to help with the water issue. That, that is, I think, one of their, really their biggest concern, which I was not even aware of. So, I mean, it's my concern now also. So, anyway, that okay. those two could become one even. Okay. okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Comments, questions by commissioners? Yes, I have. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, have y'all considered speaking with Mr. Lambert and possibly not using Magnolia Road, Magnolia Subdivision Road, and talking with Mr. Lambert to where you access uh, Highway the main, main Street. Um, no, can, sir, we haven't because we just he just got approved. You just found out that could be an option, but what did just pop into my mind that is is the traffic is their second issue. That would be a good alternative that it could funnel, not even go into the neighborhood. Ricky. Could you comment on that? Could could something like that even take place? Sure. If those three properties got together and did a spud, they'd have to be a small plan unit development because a simple rezoning does not control access, but a PUD or a small PUD because of the size does. They would have to come to us with a site plan depicting the buildings, the drainage, the access, <clears throat> the landscaping, 
the buffering, the signage, the building. It would have to come as a package. But, yes, you could do that. Now, my next question, would that help with the concerns of the residents down, that, down the road? You'll have to ask them. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. So we'll Thank you. open up for public hearing here. Okay. okay. At this time, I'd like to open up for public comment. Anyone wishing to comment, please come forward. Again, we're here. <laughs> kind of the same old thing if the access to Magnolia Estates from that lot is a lot different than one resident with two to three cars versus an office building with 10 to 15 to 20 cars trying to get out on Old Perkins Road in the morning traffic, afternoon traffic is horrendous. We don't need another commercial lot. Again, when she bought that lot, they had a trailer on it, a residence for many years. I knew the guy for a long time. It was residence when she bought it. And trying to get, I understand what she wants to do, you know, of trying to put a road down the middle, I don't think the lots would be wide enough to put a, a road down it to get your office buildings the size that you would need for the PUD or the SPUD. So she might could look at that, but I don't, the lots ain't, but. 300 foot deep, so I don't think she could put a road in plus build an office space. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> what was your name again? Do you have it? Just state it. Just. John Graham. Okay, thank you, John. <clears throat> uh, just like to say, when the car wash and all these other items, uh, establishments were built, we had no mechanism to stop it. We thought zoning was going to protect us from this kind of stuff. And as a subdivision, we couldn't tell somebody not to build something at the time because there was no zoning to back us up. And for the record, this is what Lot 3 looks like today. Uh, I don't think there was anywhere to, they could post a sign saying this one was up for public hearing. Lots 1 and 2 were posted. I don't know if they intended to post this one and couldn't get to it. But this is what we're dealing with now. So, yeah, anything there would be better, but that should not be a helping their case by letting the lot look like this. Say, well, it'll look better if you let me build something. Thank you. Thank you. Ray O'Quinn, live on uh, Magnolia Estates. Um, I just want to reiterate that I'm, you know, against the the change. And, you know, one thing that we haven't really talked about a lot is the uh, amount of traffic on Perkins Road. Um, and when I come home in the evening and, and I work off of uh, – Highland Road, not too far from Blue Bayou, and so it doesn't take me very long to get down Old Perkins Road, but, but by, say, 5.15 or 5.10, the traffic is already backed up from Airline all the way past Bluff Road, and, uh, you know, you can look at the, at, at the lot on another light, but that's just going to create more traffic. Is it? <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, public hearing is closed. You know, anything? We're good. All right, any questions, comments by commissioners? Looking at the same staff recommendations, I'm in agreement with them, so I'm going to offer a motion to uh, recommend denial of this uh, rezoning request to the parish council based on staff recommendation. And I'm going to second it for the same reason. Okay, I have a motion to deny by uh, Commissioner Marchand. Seconded by Commissioner Dalton. Any opposition? Motion to deny is approved and will be forwarded to the council. Item number uh, D, 5D, zoning ID 2098.1 for Oliver Hooper. Anyone? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. 
Hi, welcome. Hi, my name is Oliver Hooper. This is my son, Errol Hooper. I live in 3127 Caesar Lane, Donaldson, Louisiana. That's my mailing address. Actually, I live in Lemonville. Now, we have a commercial building in Lemonville. My son used to operate it as a pool hall and a game room. No alcohol, no cigarettes, anything of that nature. He operated it for quite a few years, then he decided to close it. Now he has decided to try and reopen it for the same purpose. And uh, speaking to Councilman Schechsneider, he advised us to come before the board to see if we could get your approval to open the building. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Questions, comments by commissioners? Lance, this was a non-conforming use? It closed down before zoning even, as oh. far as I can tell, as far as before even zoning came in place. I don't think the pool hall has been operating for, for many years. Okay. Yes, sir. Questions, comments by commissioners? Well, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing how a uh, pool hall or billiard room, if we can call it that, would fit into a uh, area that's surrounded by single-family dwellings. I'm having a little bit of problem with that. I play pool myself. People drive up. It brings traffic to the area. Uh, it also brings... It can, let me say it, we all know, but it can bring other elements to the area. So I'm a little bit concerned that uh, you would propose this and that you've got an area that's surrounded by single-family dwellings of various sizes. Well, there's no homes real close to the building. Uh, my home actually is across the street, and it's the close to, closest to the building. And I also uh, have a list of, of people in the community that is for the uh, pool hall reopening again. Uh, I got that list before I talked to Mr. Brock, and uh, we also got in touch with the uh, guy who's a, who owned the adjacent property, and uh, he was also for us reopening the game. I mean, so it's a community thing. Um, the people enjoyed it when it was open. The reason why it closed, actually, an 18-wheeler um, pipe from an 18-wheeler had hit the wire and it broke the meter pane and the electric company had to come and take the meter pane. And uh, during that time, uh, I was going to reopen it, but I wanted to change the fuses because it's an old building that has screw fuses. I wanted to put breakers and when I came and I did that part, I got in touch with the electrical company and they told me what I had to do and that's when I talked to Mr. Brock and he told me what I had to do from that. And uh, that's where we're at right now. But the community is for the building being open. It's a small community in Lemonville. They, they, they are for it being open. No one has uh, talked against it actually. That trail across the street is, re is residential. People are living in there, right? Yes, ma'am. I live there. Okay. And then down that street, it looked like some trailers and small homes there. Well, the, the, the lots, just like I say, adjacent to the building is, is uh, owned by one person, and he uh, he's for us uh, opening. It's, it's no no home within like maybe maybe 300 feet of the building, three 400 feet of the building. Mine is the closest, actually. So all of the parking space and everything would not interfere with anyone else's property or anything of that nature. Will, will alcohol, al excuse me, will alcoholic beverages be sold there? No, sir. No alcohol at all. Well, my point there is with Crossroads Commercial, they could apply for an alcohol license. So 
though this is quite a leap from uh, medium intensity residentials to crossroads commercial and the possibilities of what could be done. Well, we don't really see alcohol in the way in the future. Well, I understand what you're saying, but mm -hmm. this would almost be spot rezoning to be crossroads commercial and you're surrounded by medium intensity residential and by getting that rezoning to crossroads commercial, if you sold the land, then someone could walk in and request an, uh, an alcohol license in the middle of a residential. I think our council wanted to say something. Okay. <clears throat> Chairman Mayer? Yeah. Yes. They, they could apply, but they would be denied because the, if the property touches is within 300 feet of a residence, they would be denied. So even if there was a rezone and they made an application for an alcohol permit, it would, it would be denied. Okay, well, and I appreciate you sharing that. And please, don't hesitate to speak up. If you know something like that you think is relevant, please, I'd like to hear it. Well, I still I agree with you on the, uh, the spot zoning aspect of it, though. Uh, and, and primarily for that in itself, I can't, I can't agree with the request. Um, also, looking, and looking at staff's uh, recommendation, I, I have to agree with staff on this as well. So. Okay. Let's go ahead and have the public hearing. <clears throat> this time, open up a uh, public hearing. Anyone wishing to comment, please come forward. No one wishing to comment. Public hearing is closed. Any additional comments, questions by commissioners? What is the re <clears throat> request of the commission? Make a motion to deny based on staff's recommendations. Okay, a motion to deny by <clears throat> Commissioner Kluot. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Marshawn. Yeah. Any opposition? Motion to deny is approved and will be sent to the council. Uh, zoning subcommittee report <clears throat> item number six. Of course, Julio is not here, so we'll defer that until next month. And I, I, I guess he will try and schedule a zoning subcommittee meeting the third Friday. Yeah. All right. We have a motion. Motion. Yes. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned then. <clears throat>